Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, March 20th, 2013. Our top story comes from the world of biology. Last week, we talked about a virus stealing the immune system from a bacteria, and this week we're actually continuing that theme. An international team of scientists was studying an extremophile species of red algae and made some interesting discoveries. It can be found in the hot springs of Yellowstone National Park, and besides some heat tolerance, it's a pretty normal algae, using the sun's energy to create sugar through photosynthesis. However, if this microorganism finds itself in the drainage system of an old mine shaft, it becomes a total badass. Without sunlight, it begins feeding off of nearby bacteria, among other food sources, while tolerating conditions as caustic as battery acid. Now, organisms that can tolerate conditions like this aren't news, such as the other microbes that the algae feed upon when conditions get tough. It's the fact that extremophiles are usually specialists, whereas this red algae seems to be fine with a range of extreme conditions. Even more interesting is how the algae evolved these abilities. If you were paying attention to the beginning of the segment, you may have guessed that the algae stole them. It's called lateral gene transfer, and it's pretty common among bacteria and archaea, but almost unheard of in eukaryotes, organisms with a nucleus. But in the genome of this eukaryotic algae were toxin pump proteins from bacteria, heat tolerance genes from archaea, and other examples of lateral gene transfer. Figuring out how this algae stole the genes from other microbes and so successfully integrated them could be extremely helpful for biotechnology, allowing scientists to develop a similar way of engineering eukaryotic organisms from algae to produce biofuels, as well as multicellular plants and animals, including maybe humans. Next is news from the world of medicine. Bees are awesome because they make honey and pollinate many of our crops, but kind of suck when they sting people. However, this sting may actually end up saving lives. A group from Washington University have developed anti-HIV nanoparticles using a toxin found in bee venom, particularly a compound called melitin, capable of poking holes into membranes, including the protective covering of HIV and other viruses. Obviously, this would, and does, damage any kind of membrane if directly injected, but that's where the clever bit comes in. The nanoparticles have the melitin along the surface in addition to protective bumpers. These allow the particles to harmlessly bounce off something this size of a human cell, while allowing the tiny viruses to get up close and personal with the toxin. By attacking something as fundamental as the virus's protein coating, it makes it difficult to evolve a defense, whereas many drugs that target HIV interfere with very specific mechanisms in their replication, and some are already becoming ineffective. The idea is that these nanoparticles could actually be developed into a gel that could prevent the sexual transmission of HIV, in addition to being developed as an intravenous drug to destroy the virus in the bloodstream but it's still new and more testing is required. This story is an excellent opportunity to mention the charity livestream we'll be participating in the weekend of April 6th and 7th. It's to raise money for two excellent HIV-related charities, and we'll be doing a live version of the Brain Drizzle podcast for an hour on Sunday. Check the video link at the top of the description for all the details. Lastly, we have an update from the world of material science. Researchers from China have developed a radically different design that produces transparent and flexible energy storage devices. All batteries, capacitors, and other energy storage technology has pretty much the same basic design, a sandwich structure of materials. But since most materials that could be used for this kind of technology are brittle, bending usually just breaks them. So these researchers took a different approach, putting the positive and negative electrode on the same two-dimensional plane. The structure is like two combs with interlocking teeth, but because they don't actually touch each other, there's a natural empty space between the anode and cathode. This allows devices with this design to be bent without causing a short circuit. It's also semi-transparent because the comb teeth are 100 micrometers in size, below the visual resolution of the human eye. The researchers got this idea from previous work some of them had done on a flexible solar panel with wire electrodes. To test this new design, they also created a dye-sensitized solar cell and a supercapacitor. 
The devices could be repeatedly bent and unbent without losing virtually any functionality. They could even be fully wrapped around a pen. While promising, this is just the beginning, as the researchers think that this kind of design could be implemented into a wide variety of electronic and electrochemical devices, bringing practical, flexible, transparent technologies one step closer to reality. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. When transparent and flexible electronics become mainstream and practical, what kind of device would you want with the technology? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.